Hello again and welcome to another Mordian Glory bolt action video. In today's video, we shall be casting our ever critical eye over another bolt action unit. And once again, we will be traveling to the Far East and looking at an Imperial Japanese Army armored vehicle. In our last episode, we looked at the Type 92 Tank Et, a small light armored vehicle armed with lots of machine guns. And if you've not seen that video, don't worry, I'll make sure there is a link to it at the end of this one. But this time, I thought it would be better to look at something with a bit more boom boom. In fact, it might be the Japanese vehicle with the most boom boom you can get. I am, of course, talking about the very popular and incredibly powerful Type 4 Horo Assault Gun. And so, without further ado, let's dive into the good, the bad, and the ugly today's unit. As is tradition, let us begin with a brief overview of what the hell this unit actually is. According to the Bolt Action Army book for the Japanese, the Type 4 Horo Assault Gun was based on the chassis of the Chi Ha and it carried a 150mm howitzer. However, it was only really used during the defense of the Philippines and its principal service is 1945 and they only manufactured about 25 of them. Now, the reason I mention this is because there are a lot of bot action players that like to play historically. And if you're someone that doesn't want to use units that aren't time period appropriate, whilst the whole row is considered by many to be one of the best Japanese armored vehicles in the game, unless you want to play it in 1945, unless you're doing a Philippines defense map or mission, it might not really be the unit for you. But for everyone else who's just playing pickup games and who just wants to throw down some cool models and roll some dice, beer and pretzels, all that kind of good stuff, Type 4 Horo is a great unit and definitely one you want to have a look at. But let's get into it a bit further. What does this vehicle bring to the table? Well, it has a varying points cost, as you will find with most bot action units, depending on its veterancy. You can take it as either inexperienced or regular. As inexperienced, it will cost 124 points, and as regular, it will cost 155 points. You will notice that there is no option to take this as veteran. So you won't be able to unlock that all-important Leadership 10 on this unit. But considering this vehicle's light damage value, which we'll get to in a moment, you wouldn't really get much benefit out of it being veteran in terms of ignoring pins from weapons that couldn't actually hurt it. Personally, I would take this as a regular vehicle. Despite the fact that it does come equipped, and we are getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, that's okay, with one forward-facing heavy howitzer, and that's the only gun that it comes with, I would still take it as a regular. Now, some people might say, no more than you definitely want to go and experience this thing because heavy howitzers can do drop shots. And so you can just hit on sixes. And so it doesn't really matter if it's got a minus one to hit modifier for being an experience. You can just drop it in. You could just zone it in. You could dial it in. No problems whatsoever. The thing is, I do agree with that. That's definitely something you can do. But... Firstly, heavy howitzers have a minimum range when you drop shots, and so sometimes that just won't be an option. Secondly, it's all well and good saying you're going to do a indirect fire, but if you're only leadership eight and someone's put one pin on you, then you're only leadership seven, you might not get to fire at all. So I'm not a fan of inexperience just because I don't like the fact that it makes you so susceptible to pins. As a result, I think that considering it's going to be a high value target for your opponent and they're going to try and stack pins on you, you're best going for regular so you've got a better chance of getting this vehicle to do its job. And its job is to drop big giant Mac off shells on things and make them go bye bye. And it does this with a forward facing heavy howitzer. Now, heavy howitzers are fantastically powerful weapons. They do a lot of pins and they also have a pen value of plus. Or even armored vehicles are at risk from this thing. Sure, heavy vehicles, you might be looking at sixes, try and glance, but 
because of how many pins this thing does, it's like a big D6 pins, if you hit someone with it, you can just, and as long as you can pen, penetrate them, bear in mind, heavy armor, you'll be able to do that, because, or you just put D6 pins on them. And you could just, even without damaging an enemy vehicle, you could just take it out of the game for a turn or two. Roll the hit, you get the big D6 on the pins, they can't ignore them, uh, you get the big six, like I said, and suddenly that unit might have to spend at least two turns rallying, trying to get all of those pins off. Effective. And considering that there's often only six or seven turns in a bot action game, that could mean that in a single shot, the Hero could make an enemy vehicle combat ineffective for two turns, 33% of the game, without even damaging it. So it's a really powerful weapon, the, uh, the, the Heavy Howitzer. And that's talking about shooting it at its not really intended target. You shoot it at what it's meant to kill, which is infantry. <laughs> oh my god, it's just going to blow them to pieces. It's going to wound the most veteran infantry with no matter what special rules it's got. It's wound them on twos. And it's a forge template. So if your opponent's trying to dig some veteran infantry into some hard cover, you can just go, ah, oh, I'll just drop shot you. Dial it in and suddenly you just flatten the whole thing. If the enemy tries to take cover in a building, you flatten the whole thing. Heavy howitzers are fantastically powerful weapons. But the big problem with the Horo is not that it's got a heavy howitzer, is that it's only got a heavy howitzer. This thing has no backup. There's no medium machine gun. There's no light weapon stashed in the back. They've not even got a, an LMG just stashed in the back that someone's going to fire out, like a lot of the German tank destroyers have. I think it's the Marder, which you can put like a five points a medium machine gun that's got 360 degrees which literally represents one of the crewmen just stashing an mg34 he's probably not meant to have it just stashing it under some tarpaulin under a jacket and when the enemy gets close he just pulls it out and starts dackering them down no the horo doesn't even have that they haven't even got a cheeky machine gun in the back of it they've not even got an smg it does nothing so this makes it very much a one hit wonder either it's going to flatten an enemy unit or it's going to do nothing it's not even going to have the dignity of putting a token pin on something that you spaffed your medium machine into because it can't do it because it doesn't have an MMG. So it's a very, very good weapon forward facing heavy howitzer, but you better be good at rolling sixes. And the reason I say that is because the moment you target an enemy infantry unit with this, which is its principal prey, you're going to be hit on sixes because either they're going to be out in the open at which point they're going to go down and either range or light cover. Fine with that to make you hit on six. Or they're going to be already dug into cover, at which point if you do a direct shot, it's easily going to be a six followed by a six. Or you're going to have to do a drop shot, which again is going to start in on six when you're going in direct. So it's a very good gun, but when I say you better be good at rolling sixes, I hope you can see that you better be good at rolling sixes, otherwise this thing is going to struggle. But moving on to its damage value, it's armor 7 plus. In most armies, this would be a big deal. It'd be like, oh my god, it's such a light piece of armor, we're going to have to protect it at all costs, and it's going to have to bully things. In the Imperial Japanese army, this is just called a Tuesday. It's just normal. Pretty much every Japanese vehicle that you're going to put in your list is going to have armor 7 plus. And in terms of the wider bot action meta, that's actually kind of a competitive thing. You're not paying for armor that you don't really want to use. I mean, at the end of the day, this thing is going to be sat at the back lobbing shells at people. Does it really need a higher armor value? Probably not. And is it in line with the rest of your, your tanks? Probably. So it's definitely light. And so if the enemy does shoot it with something even remotely anti-tank it will probably hurt but it's got the range and the gun to keep well back and so its protection is not its armor value its protection is the range it can fire its weapon at however we then get to the special rules and sadly for the hargo not a good one it's open topped this means that anything can pin you up. It could be a pistol. It could be a rifle. Someone could throw a snotty tissue in your general direction and your hero is going to take the pins. You know before how I said, don't worry about you not having the choice of making a veteran because you wouldn't really feel the benefit of it. This is really what I was talking about because it's open top. So anything can get pins on you. 
Now that just about covers the overview. In fact, we've gone into quite a lot of the tactics and the deep dive around the whole row. But let me just go into a bit more detail on this vehicle because some of you may be scratching your heads and going, well, why is this thing so good? Why do Japanese players go on about this like it's the best thing since sliced bread? Well, the reason the whole row is considered to be quite good is because of its points cost. It's only 155 points. And when you compare that to a regular heavy howitzer, one that you might include in your artillery section, a, an infantry based one, a, a fixed one, which is 115 points, you realize that those 40 points are, those 40 extra points to make your heavy howitzer essentially a ho row are well worth it. Because sure, the ho row is open topped. You know what else gets pinned up by rifle fire? The regular howitzer. And sure, it's only armor 7 plus. But do you know what's less than armor 7 plus? A regular heavy howitzer. If you're hitting that thing with rifles and it's regular, you'll be. Might have a gun shield, might not. But you'll probably be wounding it on fours or fives. So the whole row is just infinitely more durable. Sure, you can pin it up, but you can't kill it with small arms. And it makes it more resilient to uh, light anti-tank weapons as well. If someone tries to drop like a medium mortar on it, even if they like hit the top of it, they get like pen plus three, they're only wounding it on fours. Whereas they would be wounding your heavy howitzer on twos or threes. And then you've got the fact that it is on a vehicle. So unlike that regular heavy howitzer that just be sat there just getting dialed in from every indirect fire weapon your opponent could bring to bear on it and it can't do anything about it because it's fixed it basically can't move your whole row if people try and dial in on it it can go oh I'll just move oh and guess what I can still shoot afterwards nothing stopping you taking a whole row and giving it an advanced order it's not got one man tour or anything it's not got must stay still to shoot so it can just move and you're like oh yeah but then it's minus one to hit so it might be hit on sixes followed by sixes okay well then I'll just do the drop shot I'll just use the indirect fire. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm rolling for those sixes that I love so much with this gun, apparently. But at least I can stay mobile. I can get to the threats that I want to get to. I've got choices of firing, like direct and indirect. And at the end of the day, I am just so much more durable than a regular heavy howitzer. And that is what makes the whole row good. If you are going to include a heavy gun in your army, there is almost no argument that could be made to say... Well, you might as well go for the fixed one instead. No, just always go for the ho row when you're taking pill Japanese and you are thinking of putting a heavy howitzer in your army. There is one disadvantage to having your howitzer on the uh, assault gun platform on the Type 4. You don't get a spotter. One of the big things that your regular ass howitzer can do is sit behind a bit of dense terrain, sit behind a forest and then put the spotter basically in the forest and then the shoot out which does, of course, give it a lot of uh, protection. But obviously, if someone takes that spotter out, you're going to be in a bit of a pickle. But spotters are kind of difficult to kill. So long story short, the one thing that the regular howitzer, and it is a big thing, has over the hero is the fact you can take a spotter instead of having to do anything that you can see. Overall, I believe that the Type 4 Horo Assault Gun is a very solid Japanese unit. It does have a number of drawbacks and it's not a perfect vehicle. But if you were thinking of adding some serious artillery into your list and you wanted a vehicle that can, for a very low price point, take on any kind of unit in the game through either pins or actual damage, then the whole row is good. However, if you want a tank which is a little bit more flexible, a little bit more reliable and at least has some backup options, and you may want to consider something which is a little bit more, frankly, tank-like and less like a mobile heavy howitzer. But of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. What experience level would you take your ho row as? And would you include one of these in your list? Or do you think it's a little bit limited with that one gun? If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? 
If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons. You guys are amazing. Truly the lifeblood of the channel. I could not do Mordian glory full time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters and they have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty so a big shout out to bon bon vert mad larkin marcus roberts mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone john stubbs nick walsh diesel fox and august varney thank you guys so much your incredible generosity is a massive part of how i'm able to do more Dig glory full time and it is a big driving force behind the channel but i hope you all enjoyed today's video thank you for watching and of course as always i'll see you guys next time